Xbox Live here on our new time Thursday evenings. 6 yeah, 6 p.m. is an evening. Thank yeah. you all for coming. Appreciate Absolutely. it. We're back with part two of our saltwater versus freshwater kind of side-by-side -side build in the nano tanks. Um, so we're going to actually look a little bit at cycling and adding inverts this week. Yep, we're diving into all things desktop aquariums. Yep. And we are also giving away uh, two of these tanks. But before we talk about that, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, because we are here every week. We are live. We're live so that we can be here with you guys, take your questions, talk about anything related to aquariums, water box, any of the products we sell, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, so we will have um, a little Q&A towards the end. So if you have any questions, drop them now. Start dropping them throughout the whole thing. Um, and that way they can grab them and we can do answer those a little bit later in the show. Cool. So let's talk about the giveaway. Yes, everyone loves a giveaway. Yes, finally, we're back. We're giving away some tanks. We're giving away a Clear Mini 16 with the AI Prime freshwater lighting. Yep. We're giving away a, this is a Cube 15 with the Prime saltwater lighting. Yes. And can we pull that up? Yeah. You just gotta go to waterboxagrams.com slash build. Yeah, so if you guys wanna find where to enter for this giveaway, head over to waterboxaquariums.com forward slash builds. Builds with an S? Build. 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 So we'll make sure builds is okay. correct as well. Mm -hmm. waterboxaquariums.com forward slash build. You're going to get all the details on the actual build that we're doing that you're going to see here today. This is the second episode. Yep. Um, and we'll list all the episodes as they go up. And then after that, you're going to find the giveaway. This is the fun stuff. So what you're going to do is just give us a little bit of information. And then we have social actions. So you mm -hmm. don't just get the one entry for filling out some information. We're going to give you more entries if you like us on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, refer your friends. And, of course, our favorite, the bonus word, which yes. happens every week. you got to be here live to actually catch that bonus word, so keep an eye out for that. Yep. So that's part of the uh, bonus of watching live is you get the bonus word, so that way you get some extra entries into mm -hmm. the giveaway. So definitely get entered for that. Watch every week for the bonus word. Um, great little systems. I love it. And that's kind of what we were doing with this build is show you, A, the desktop aquariums, fresh and salt, how the process is different. Mm -hmm. Give me an idea, like, okay, I want to get something a little bit smaller, maybe that fits on my desk or, you know, mm -hmm. near your bedroom dress or something. And you're like, but I don't know, should I do fresh water? Should I do salt water? It's a common question that we get. And this is going to give you an idea um, how the process are different, equipment's different, you know, just general setup. And last week we set these up right here. Yes? Real quick, you're muted, Rich. Yep. Yep. <laughs> sure am. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so last okay. week we set this up. Check out the um, episode if you missed it. And we actually escaped, put them together, and filled uh, yep. live on the show. And then we we're going to talk about cycling, which is what we've been doing this last week, and add some inverts today. Cool. And I do want to mention that this is my first freshwater planet tank. So they're Root learning. Them on. Root them on. I'm learning with you guys. I've always been a saltwater guy. I've never really taken the, I've always wanted to do the plant. And over mm -hmm. the last couple of years as we've been doing more of them, I've wanted to do one for myself. So there you go. Here we are. Um, so let's first talk about cycling. That's what they commonly refer to. It's the nitrogen cycle. It's where you need to establish good bacteria that can keep your aquarium stable from fish waste, ammonia, nitrite, all of that stuff. Uh, and I think we have a graphic so we can kind of just show a good visual of what happens. Um, so basically, any kind of waste product, fish food, fish waste from the fish food, comes out and is ammonia. Very, very toxic to fish, inverts, everything. Then there's a bacteria that breaks that down and turns it to nitrite. Nitrite is also very toxic to live animals and inverts, and that needs to be also broken down by a different strain of bacteria into a less harmful nitrate. Um, nitrate is what you do your water changes for. So nitrates are removed generally by water change. Some kind of medias and other things do help reduce nitrate, but it's the byproduct of any kind of waste. It doesn't matter what it's from. Every creature that comes into your aquarium is creating some kind of waste. So you need that toxic ammonia to convert and switch all the way down to nitrate at a fast enough rate that it's never detectable. And that's what your nitrogen cycle is, is you've built up the different colonies of bacteria to where they convert everything down. When you test, you never see ammonia or nitrite. 
and it converts to nitrate, and that's when your tank is cycled and healthy to be able to handle livestock um, and keep them safe. So, in an easy term, you can go dig in this and get real scientific with bacteria mm -hmm. strain names, stuff like that. But the general gist is you need um, established bacteria to be able to break down your waste. Yep. Now, old school used to be, you can go back, um, old school used to be set up your tank, throw in some cheap fish, mm -hmm. usually damsels or in a freshwater tank, just the cheapest fish you can find, and hope for the best as they do their thing and you feed them. Um, a lot of times this water spikes and your ammonia gets really high, your fish die. Um, you know, this is not the way anymore. If, don't do it if someone recommends it. Right. Because it's not nice. It's kind of what it comes down to. Um, so we do what's called fishless cycling. Very, very popular. It's kind of the way to do it now. And you accomplish this by putting fish food into the aquarium as if there was fish. It's going to serve the same purpose. It's going to break down going to create the ammonia mm -hmm. to feed those bacteria to break it to nitrite. Um, and when you do this way while adding a beneficial good bacteria, you're able to pretty quickly establish bacteria colony in your aquarium so that you can start adding livestock, of course, still slowly um, and carefully while testing the whole time. So in my tank here, using the live sand, which comes in with some good bacteria, the life rock also has dormant live bacteria on it that comes out um, once you have it in the aquarium. Yep. And that's all gonna help cycle. Also, adding a bacteria supplement while ghost feeding, is what the kind of turn is, ghost feeding um, your aquarium to put the waste product in there. You're feeding the ghost fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend there's fish, put food in, let that break down, don't hurt fish. Um, same thing with yours, the substrate that used has good bacteria. We're adding bacteria and fish food into that one. Um, anytime you do this, you want to test regularly, make sure that it's staying stable, and then stock very, very slowly still until you know that everything does stay stable, because the last thing we want is for live animals, shrimp, or anything to go in, things spike, get disease, mm -hmm. or they die. So um, that is your cycling process in a simplified form. Don't use live fish. Use a bacteria supplement. Feed some fish food. Perfect. Yep. So that's what we've been doing this last week. Um, adding the food, adding the bacteria, keeping an eye on the parameters, and now it's time to lightly stock. Our first step is going to be inverts. Yep. Very light bio load, but they're gonna help clean the tank up. Um, and that goes for fresh water and salt water. So that's kind of similar across the board. I did see a couple of questions if we post in the links just real quick. We are giving, you guys do know about the giveaway. The giveaway link is waterboxquarium.com forward slash build. Steven also said that the freshwater tank is looking like fire, so. Ooh, there love you it. go. <laughs> give him the love, give him the love. Hey, it does look nice. I love yeah. the, the wood fits so perfect in there. Mm -hmm. Like it just fills up very nicely. It, gives an, it makes it feel much larger. I think it's gonna turn out really, really nice. Cool. Yep. All right, so we're gonna add some inverts in there. Um, and what do you got going on here? So like I, got, I got a number, first. I have five cherry shrimp, and I also have a uh, nearite snail. Awesome. So the nearite snail is going to be one which in a freshwater tank is beneficial. It is not going to breed, which is wonderful. It's not going to overpopulate your tank like a lot of other hitchhiker snails. And they are, put them down so that we can bring the camera up close to see that shell. I was trying to get them on the... So narrow snails are really decorative. They have a beautiful shell. They're going to clean algae, but they're not going to populate and take over a tank because they actually live in brackish to salt to fresh. Yeah. Um, and they can only populate in, a, in um, certain parameters of the water. So it's gonna be a good cleaner that's not gonna overtake. We need someone in there kind of cleaning up any algae that comes up. So really, really, really pretty shell. I don't know if you can zoom in any more than that or not. Ooh, and they come in a lot of patterns too. Um, so definitely look into these for a good algae cleaner in a freshwater tank. And then we're just gonna put some shrimp in here. Do they go in? Yep. Oh God. Kenan might have to go find them. There's one guy hanging out up here and I, don't, I think the other one swam off. Okay. So adding in some cherry shrimp, these um, are a nice small type of shrimp. They're going to scavenge, they're also going to clean up some algae within the tank. They're gonna be overall good cleaners. They don't get big and their bio load is light, 
One thing is they are shrimp, which means they're naturally going to be more sensitive than some of your hardier stuff. So you do want to make sure that you know your water quality is staying stable um, and not have fluctuations in testing regularly if you're adding in the cherry shrimp. But we're going to add stuff in that's got a light bio load so we don't push um, what the tank can handle in the very beginning. Way too quick. Put the net down towards like a front corner and let that come out. And then face it towards Keenan. There we go. That's a nice bright red one. And cherry shrimp, they come in a ton of colors. You got stripes, you got like blush, you got yellow, you got blue, you got red, you've got mixed. There's a ton of different varieties of them and they're really, really pretty. And so there's going to basically be good scavengers and cleaners for the tank. And they actually do reproduce too. So especially if you don't have any fish that are like big predators of them, where you have a lot of space for the babies to hide. Um, these cherry shrimp are actually ones that are, have been raised and bred in our tanks here at the studio. Go! Little guy. Like we don't want to. See if it'll come out. Oh, one's running in the front. There you go. Yeah, so these guys are a lot of fun to watch, too. And so you can get them in a whole bunch of different colors, and you can, they're populate well. They're running away. Now, a lot of people that are saltwater people don't think freshwater can be fun or cool stuff. I love it. But there is actually a lot of neat little things that you can put into a freshwater tank. So yeah. you can make it a lot of fun. Like I said, these guys, I mean, we've got a, a really good breeding population here mm -hmm. of cherry shrimp. And they just naturally, they're just doing their thing. Don't you have, have them in a clear 10? Clear 10 is my shrimp tank. And this is actually on my desk, and it's got mono shrimp and cherry shrimp in it. Yeah. And they are happy as can be, but there's no fish, so there's no predators, so they're just reproducing like crazy. Nice. Um, which is nice that we have a source of uh, cherry shrimp around here. So, um, And for mine, Similar, we need cleaners, but we need light bio load. So I'm gonna add some. I've got snails, hermit crabs, and Nassarius snails for here. Cool, you want, Keen, do you wanna get a close up on these two? Beep, beep. I'm gonna have to jump on the other camera. Maybe. So I do wanna mention you guys, if you have questions, post them below. You got questions about my freshwater tank, our salt water, Anything water box related here at the end of the closer to the end of the stream, we're going to do a Q and A. We right, always I'll take your questions here, every week. Whatever I can reach. Um, so first ones is we're going to put snails in here. These are just kind of some basic astro snails. They are going to clean rock and glass of algae. Um, I do prefer trochus, but I just don't have any at the moment. So we're going with some astrias. and these are just going to feed on regular film algae, that kind of stuff. Um, don't need too many. I'm putting three, which is plenty in here, just to let them clean up. Now that I'm putting some algae eaters in, we'll increase the light a little bit, so to make sure that there is at least light dusting of algae stuff for them to feed off of so they don't starve. So those are going to do glass and rock mainly. <clears throat> Next is going to be your hermit crabs. When you're doing hermit crabs, especially in like a community reef, you want to do like red tips. Uh, Mexican red legs are like my favorite. They are herbivores and they're not as aggressive as some of your other types of hermit crabs. And they are herbivores versus omnivores. They're not going to usually go after your snails and stuff nearly as much as some of your more aggressive types. And these guys are mostly going to just scavenge pieces of fish food, little bits of algae, kind of whatever they can find. But their little tiny claws are great for getting in all the crevices of the rock. Um, and keeping like tight small areas really really clean so adding four of these guys in and they're going to help clean up the fish food that's going in here to sustain the cycle as well and then from them some of my favorite snails my favorite too. <laughs> um, for your sand it is super important to keep your sand clean and with the proper inverts from the beginning otherwise you're going to be dealing with a lot of sand issues that are harder to fight than they are to fix um, and these are called Nasaria snails, so call them zombie snails, because if you look, once they come out, especially watch this big guy, they have this little snorkel, and they spend most of their time under the sand. You don't even know they're there, except for maybe just a tiny little 
little <laughs> tiny thing that does not want to. Doesn't want to focus. Doesn't want to focus. Um, so you, I think you can kind of see his little snorkel coming up. And they're going to scoot themselves under the sand. Pretty much like you won't know that they're there unless you really know how to look for the, like, the tip of the snorkel. And it's then you put food in. And then suddenly these things just come gliding up from the sand like little zombies. So I call them zombie snails. They're a lot of fun. Extremely important to keep your sand bed, bed mixed up with inverts. Going to clean out a lot of waste. Going to prevent a lot of algae problems on your sand bed by kind of stocking them in the beginning. Only two for now because their sand bed is super clean because it's not, mm -hmm. we haven't had anything in here. You want to kind of continuously add to that number to keep it clean. Look, he's already going in. He's going in. He's digging. I don't think these guys get enough cred. I love these things. Great for sand beds. Great for sand beds and a lot of fun whenever they come flying out. So that's really all you need for a small tank to get started. If you put, um, you know, and you'll see a lot of places have these like invert packs, cleanup crew packs for by gallon. And it's like, okay, I have a, I have a 15 gallon. Let me get a cleanup crew. And it's like 15 snails, 15 hermits, 15 this. Problem is, 12 plus of each of those categories is going to die yep. because there's not enough food. It's too much going at once, um, and then you're back down to normal numbers. So don't buy huge amounts of inverts, especially for a new tank, because <coughs> it just can't sustain it, and you're also going to have more issues like spiking your ammonia and stuff like that. So I'm add like slowly. like watching the shrimp over here as you're talking. They're, move, they go, they're, <laughs> they're fast. Um, so don't stock too heavy on your cleanup crew because they're going to starve, they're going to die off and cause more problems. So go slow, add regularly. So we got a cleanup crew. So we're starting some fun stuff to look in our yep. tanks. Salt water goes a little bit slower. It does. I mean, you got those nice plants and stuff in here. I got some crabs and some snails, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so it's, it is a big difference because, you know, a freshwater tank is like almost instantly gratifying. Right. Beautiful. It's got plants, you know, nice and vibrant color. You know, we're still looking at rock over here. It takes a lot mm -hmm. longer to get it full of different stuff. So. Um, One of the things that I find <clears throat> kind of interesting, especially when you have a planted tank and a solar tank side by side, mm -hmm. is the color spectrum difference, and just the yeah. color difference overall. Like when you look at a saltwater tank, especially a reef tank these days, there's a lot of like, like especially when you have corals in it, a lot of well, fluorescence. Well, up here, it's like blue glow on half of mm -hmm. my face, like it's just from there, and then yeah. you got this nice natural neutral color. Yeah, and then, so you got the fluorescence over there, the blue color, and then over here you got the more natural, the browns, the greens. They both look amazing. But uh, <laughs> it's just two totally different looks. So that might be something that you want to consider. Uh, what's happening? I knew as soon as I said it, I was like, we're going to get a joke. Yeah. And I was like, and snails. I got to add and snails after the crab comment. Um, <laughs> Mr. Orange Crush, thank you. <laughs> it's like, I saw that coming. Someone's asking how Gary's doing. Gary's good. He's living life in the six foot keeps, frag. Keeps the frag clean. He keeps the, he's like my almost my only snail in there. Mm -hmm. And he's happy as can be that way. No way there's still natural stuff for him to graze on. He makes his way to the algae clip on occasion, too. Cool. I know. Anytime they're laughing back there, I got to see what's I, going I on know. in the comments. I, I heard it going on. I was trying to like keep what I was saying <laughs> going. But, um, they're very distracting. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have questions, put them below. I think we're going to do a QA and a now, right? Are we ready or for jokes. that? We got jokes. We, we got, got jokes, too. Give me some jokes. Got jo oh, man. <clears throat> All right, it's joke hour. We got it? <laughs> um, Jim says, my 25 Peninsula should be here next week doing bare bottom reef with it. What changes would you make when selecting a CUC versus a sand bottom? Um, yeah, so your cleanup crew will be different in a bare bottom tank. So you're not going to have Nasarius, Conks, or Sarah snails for the most part. Sarah snails, um, they're great cleaners because they do actually do rock and sand and kind of glass. But I would limit their numbers because they do enjoy being in the sand. Yeah. Um, besides that, your snails and your hermit crabs and stuff like that are still the same. Um, you know, the main thing with bare bottom is manual cleaning of like where the detritus builds up. Because if you put your flow in a certain way, you're going to have one pocket in that tank that kind of your all your stuff accumulates. Mm -hmm. And keeping that clean and out is going to be your main thing. It's a lot of manual, more manual removal in that kind of scenario because. Um, your snails and crabs aren't going to necessarily eat a pile of detritus. Reef Bros, do you like skimmers on the nano reefs? I've been thinking about trying one. It's like a nano skimmer. Yeah, um, we actually, um, they're on the website now, but the Tunzi 
is great for nanos. The um, 9001 is good for all our cube and like the cube ones and the smallest yeah. all-in-one. Then there's the 9004 for our all-in-one series. Um, they're, they're beneficial, you know, they're going to help you with waste product and stuff like that. Like currently like our cube 20 here, I don't want to skimmer on. It's soft corals. I don't need it too clean. Mm -hmm. I want them to kind of just have a little bit dirtier of a tank and it's just basically a big tank, big old leathers in there. So, yeah. um, but they're definitely going to keep your waste product down in there. Yeah. So again, the Tunzi 9001, 9004. Yeah. Those have been a really staple nano skimmer for as long as I can remember. Very, Tunzi's very, been around for a long time. Yeah. And those particular models have been upgraded over the years, but they're really good. You guys have been asking us for something like that for a while. What do I put on my Nano? What do I put on my all-in-one? Yeah. So we finally uh, worked with them to get that for you guys, specifically here in the U.S. So check that out. Yep. Stevens, do you have to do weekly water changes on fresh water? I mean, I guess you could, but you don't really need to. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really depends also. If you're doing like a low-tech and you're using, kind of like here, we're using Java Moss, you say Java Ferns, Amazon Swords, some of your easier plants. Um, the maintenance is pretty minimal. You know, every couple of weeks do a water change. Higher demand, high-tech, CO2, dosing and stuff like that, you might find, the, you know, the upkeep's gonna be a little bit more. But we're big fans of the low-tech, really nice, easy but beautiful planted aquariums. Um, but of course, everyone has a little bit of a different method. Sure. Is the giveaway only for the USA? No, the giveaway is for all of our markets. So it should be US, Canada, Europe, UK. You tell me. I might. I don't know. I if that's might right. get yelled at for that tomorrow. I'm not sure if that's right. But, uh, <laughs> it can be for any of those. If the winners that get randomly picked happen to be in one of those markets, perfect. They still get. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is it's not only for the USA. I actually didn't know the answer to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, reefing is my therapy. What are your thoughts on kicking off the cycle with corals? <laughs> I prefer not to. Um, my general standard that, that we do here, the water box method, I guess you could say, of cycling, is set up ghost feed with bacteria. Once that's, once you know you're good for a week or so, Inverts, mm -hmm. good for a week or so, which means no ammonia nitrite showing up. After that, um, depending on how long that takes you, uh, we're looking at then first fish, yep. light bio load, hardy fish. Then from there, continue testing, no ammonia nitrite for at least a week or so, you know, then go to coral and start with your easier stuff. Yeah. So that's, I mean, there, like I said, there's a million different methods and ways that people do stuff. But this is the way that I've done it for 15 plus years. That's the way we do it on all the tanks here. Um, and we get our tanks established with minimal algae problems. You know, minimal, any kind, there's no loss, that kind of stuff. So just be really cautious. Nothing, especially in salt water, nothing good happens fast. Yeah. Take your time. DJ Mike Fair, I've only dealt with salt water, but with Planet Aquarium, is it harder to keep that a regular freshwater tank? I've heard plants bring in another level of maintenance. Yeah, they do. Um, I mean, having just a tank full of community fish with um, artificial stuff, of course, would be less maintenance than a tank with live plants because live plants do require pruning, um, you know, growth requirements, special lighting. They do need certain elements out of the water. You know, there are a lot of variables that go along with it, but they're extremely beneficial for your tank because mm -hmm. they provide oxygen. You know, they help clean the water. It's more natural for the fish, um, you know, all of that. So. While it does take more work, I think the offset of the benefits is a lot. It's definitely worth it. Adriana is asking, in a new saltwater or in a nano saltwater tank, how many inverts should you add at a time? I noticed in a previous video you added some inverts one week and one more week later. You're going to add inverts kind of regularly for the existence of your aquarium. Um, in the beginning, like I said, so this is a 15 gallon. I had three small snails, four hermits, two sand cleaners. Um, that's plenty. It'll probably be another couple weeks until I add any more. Once you kind of have the coral in there, your lights are going up in time frame. They're on eight hours a day. You're going to find kind of where that balance is. You got fish making fish poop and all that stuff. Um, find that balance of look at your tank. You've got a little bit of algae showing up add a small amount of inverts. Mm -hmm. Let them do their job for a bit. Um, you're also going to find, you know, my, 
your tank's established, you've had inverts in there, you're gonna notice every few months, your numbers have dropped. Snails die, they fall, hermits eat them, whatever happens. Um, so every couple months, you're really, you're generally gonna need to do an invert restock. And notice, okay, I'm down a couple, need to put some more in. So it's kind of a consistent. Inverts are generally not there to be with you forever. Mm -hmm. Don't get attached to your snail, don't get attached to that hermit <laughs> crab. They're not there to be forever. Things. It's not like a fish that you've had 14 years later or anything like that. So unless you're Gary, unless you're Gary, Gary, yeah, you know some live longer than others, but you're yeah. don't don't name your hermit crabs and let yeah. your kids get attached and stuff. <laughs> and gentleman's asking, would you consider adding an emerald crab? When? Um, not unless you need one. So I don't add emerald crabs to tanks unless, for the most part, it's a a very very large tank and there's a lot of natural food. You have bubble algae or you have hair algae. So adding a emerald crab just because can get you in some trouble. Yeah. Um, they do need a good amount of food. They're a big crab. They have big pinchers. If they don't have enough food, they will find food. And that can be in the form of other inverts, small fish, picking at coral stalks, whatever the case may be. You want there to be enough food for them or go in and spot feed an emerald crab. So they can be aggressive if they are short on food. <laughs> I saw this one. Oliver Richmond says, why do fish get bad grades? Because it's below sea level. <laughs> <laughs> they got the joke. I like it. I, I want to know like if it. you guys are on Team Fresh or Team Salt. Not that we're on teams here or we're competing, right. but tell us which one, which one are you we're doing? We're going to have a competition one day. I know. We're going to have to. That, they've, uh, we've had people asking for that for a while. Yeah, I just, very long. You know, I'm going to lose, so... <laughs> I'm already sad about it. Put <laughs> more plants in there, man. We gotta get more plants. Brian Brown says, "Can Hydra get in your filter media of a hang on back filter?" Was was going to try and use some help to speed up the cycle, but didn't want new didn't want Hydra in the new tank. Yeah, I mean, if you bring something over from another tank that has any kind of pests or other things, it absolutely spores, eggs, whatever can transfer from your filter, one hundred percent. I think it's unfair to ask that question, either Team Salt or Team uh, on this channel. Why? Maybe. <laughs> what are you Maybe. talking about? <laughs> totally fair. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I mean, the goal, I mean, hopefully we're going to have some people that are like Team Salt, but then actually they see your tank progress and they're they actually going to consider I know a number water. of people that have fresh and salt. Oh, yeah, for sure. Cole Horman says... I have to do a 30 gallon tank move in a couple of weeks. What are the do's and don'ts of a tank move? We have some really good build. Or I was gonna say, we do. Um, on the YouTube, episodes. we do have a couple of videos um, of us moving tanks and a lot of good do's and don'ts on how to do it. So do check that out for more information, but a quick rundown. Do not, re do not use your sand. Remove sand bed and replace. This is the number one rule I will always tell people. Do not move that sand bed. It is disaster waiting to happen. Gut it put the investment into some new sand. Um, save as much water as you can before you like start ripping out sand and rock, drain out water into some bends. Then take your rock, corals, fish into that clean, undisturbed water. Because once you start lifting rocks, it's gonna be a mess in there. Um, gut it out and then replace using some of that water, fresh sand and new water, adding bacteria as if you're kind of establishing and monitor your water levels, feed really light. Quick rundown. Get a longer version on the YouTube channel. Time for the code. It's a bonus word. I want to take this one last question. Someone <laughs> asked if we're ever going to post a light schedule for the AI Prime 16 for the 50.3. We used to have blueprints. We, we could download our lighting schedule slash programming for the aqua illumination lighting. Mm -hmm. We don't have that up anymore, but you can go over, search Aqua Illumination Signature Series. That's going to give you a lot of good, different good options. It's going to show you people's tanks, yeah. how they have them set up, and you can download the exact lighting schedules and actually see the person's tank that's running. There's a ton right. of variety on there, depending on what you run, yeah. how you look at it, and you can see the spectrum. That's a great place because it gives you just more options than the one preset. Cool. All right, it's a bonus word time now. You guys had to wait a while for this one. We got the bonus word. All right, ready? Desktop. Desktop. <clears throat> All right, go and enter that into the giveaway page, and that's gonna get you some extra entries into Giveaway. Yeah, it's not your computer's desktop. It's your desktop aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to clarify. That. It types the same, so whatever yeah. you want to call it. <laughs> um, so definitely check that out. And 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's your uh, part. <laughs> if you guys haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the notifications because we are here every single week. We're here every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern, which is our new time. Yep. Um, Speaking of next week, next week is the fun. I, this is one I think gets a lot of fun, mm -hmm. um, at least for the saltwater side, because it's kind, yeah. kind of boring over here. Um, <laughs> is we get to add fish. So we're going to talk about nano fish, nano freshwater fish, nano saltwater. We get to add some living, swimming things in here. Mm -hmm. So definitely tune in to see what we choose for our aquariums. Cool. We appreciate you all being here as always. We will see you next week. See ya. Thank you all for watching. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. And also remember you can visit us online at waterboxaquariums.com. Also join our official Facebook group. Thanks for watching live. See you next week.